welcome to part two of the Community Events New User Primer. This screencast is going to be focused on this Community tab that exists on the Events Settings page, and what options you as a site administrator have in terms of controlling the overall plugin. In the next screencast, we'll look at the front-end form and the submission process, but here we're going to be limited to this tab. And notice, this tab only came into existence when we activated the Community add-on. I didn't have to do anything to bring it into existence, I just turned the plugin on and it came about. And when we get into it, we see we have a number of options. Keep in mind also, if you ever need to come back and revisit this new user primer, you've got a handy little link for it right here. Otherwise, in terms of the general settings, the first option you have is to allow anonymous submissions. Literally, do you want to have it so that only registered members can view and submit, or do you want to have it so that anybody can view the form and submit off the form? If you enable this, all they'll have to do is check a little box that says, I'm not an evil spammer, and they'll be able to submit without providing any personal information. Using the visual editor for event descriptions, simply turns on a visual editor on the front-end form. Without it, there's just a text box. The default status for submitted events lets you determine what happens to events when they're submitted. If you like more oversight, you're probably going to want to go with something like draft or pending review, so that once something comes in, it lands in one of these states, and you decide on what goes through before it actually published. Otherwise, if you feel comfortable just publishing anything that people submit, feel free to set it as published, and they'll automatically go live without you having to do anything. The community rewrite slug is literally where the community form lives on the front end of your site. The calendar naturally lives at slash events. Community takes it another step deeper. It goes into slash events slash community. And if you want to go to the form, it's slash community slash add. If you want to go to the list of submitted events, it's slash community slash list. Alerts are pretty straightforward. They allow you to receive a notification whenever somebody submits a new form. This is a two-step process. First, first step is to check this box right here. Second step is to enter in the email address or email addresses you'd like to be notified. Make sure that if you are using multiple email addresses, they are all on a separate line. For members of the site, people who have accounts, you do have a few extra options. You can allow them to edit their submissions, and you can allow them to remove their submissions. If they do remove their submissions, what should happen? Should those deleted events go straight to the trash, where they will live until you actually go in and permanently delete them, or should they be wiped entirely from the system? It's going to default to placed in the trash, but if you want to go with permanently deleted, just change the radio button and save and you'll be good. My events are my own submitted events, and this is only for members. People who are anonymous submitters will not be able to edit their events, they'll not be able to go view their own events, because there's no real way for the system to tie them in beyond creating a cookie or something a bit deeper than what we have right now. So, keep in mind that these settings for the members and the my events are only for people who are logged in. But, if I'm a logged in member and I've submitted a handful of events, what do I want to see when I go to view those events? Do I want to see one event per page? Do I want to see 10 events per page? And when they're submitted, how do I care about that time and date formatting? You can change this to whatever you want. This link here is not something that we created. It's just part of the WordPress codex, but it gives you some useful information on formatting date and time. And if you want to change the way that your own submitted events appear, this is where you do it when you view them on the list. Access control gives you the ability to control what happens on the dashboard of your site and who gets there. This is probably good to have if you don't want people who are just submitting forms on the front end to be able to see the back end of the site. So you would check this box, and it would also disable the admin bar. You can determine specific roles that you'd like to block from the back end. In this case, we just have subscriber and shop manager. I could check all of them as I wanted to. And you can also determine where they are redirected. This means if they attempt to visit the slash WP admin, where does it redirect them? By default, it's going to take them to the home page, but if you want to go to a specific, hey, that's off limits, or hey, you can't go to that page, but check out this page, you can do that here. Otherwise, just leave it blank and it'll go to the home page. Lastly, we have pro options. These only appear if you are running community events alongside both the events calendar and the events calendar pro add-on, and they allow you to select a default venue and a default organizer for submitted events. Basically, these are saved in the system. Saved venues and organizers is a pro functionality, and so we've carried it over to the community events form here as well. If you leave it blank, nothing's going to happen. But if you select something that already exists in the system, it'll pre-populate that for any submitted event on the front end. That said, the user could absolutely choose to change it if they don't want to, so really the most you can do is offer them this as a suggestion. You can't force it. Whenever you're done, you're just going to want to save your changes, and when those are saved, you're ready to proceed. See you in Screencast 3 for a walkthrough of the front-end experience.